Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today talking about WWE's uh, 24 uh, last night, which was, uh, I think it was like episode 4, episode 5. They haven't done many of these. They did the uh, the episode last year, which ended up being uh, episode number 1. They ended up airing um, a, a little while after WrestleMania, and I thought that this was a, a really good documentary on WrestleMania 30. Um but I also thought at the time that it was going to be a documentary series that focused on the week of WrestleMania. And I thought it was going to be a really good commercial to make people want to go to WrestleMania each and every year. I didn't know that it was only going to be a 30-minute documentary, but it was still very good. Now, coming into this uh, this year's documentary, focusing on WrestleMania 31, um, I thought that it was good. I didn't think that it was great. Uh, honestly, you, al you also have to think that uh, we've seen... A bulk of this footage already, um, you know, basically on the Sting DVD that came out not that long ago, um, we saw a, a good majority um, of, of Sting showing up because this was a, his first big event uh, for WWE going to, to wrestle against Triple H. Uh, also, an episode of 24 focused on uh, Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 31, and uh, we already saw him get followed around. So, I'll say out of the 30-minute episode, we've already seen close to 10 minutes of this already, but still, um, this focused on three days of the WrestleMania weekend, which is still a really good, you know, commercial to make people want to go to WrestleMania. I still think that, um, they could have focused on the NXT show. They could have focused more on access, um, to really show you what these events are, um, to make people who have never gone to WrestleMania really want to go. I, I, I think a lot of people have come to me and told me because of my WrestleMania videos each and every year that those are the best videos that I do. And that is the reason why people want to go to WrestleMania, to live in the world of wrestling, uh, you know, for, for days. And, uh, you know, that's this year when we go, we're going to a basketball game, um, which is sort of opening the door. I remember when we went to... Um, WrestleMania 30 in New Orleans. Um, some people on the first day that were going were going to a uh, arena football game, which I had never been to, and uh, I just thought that was so bizarre that wrestling would be there and you would not be uh, trying to be a part of that. But uh, really, in this uh, documentary, uh, it focuses a lot on Sting, Roman Reigns, Paige, and Seth Rollins, and we followed them around throughout the day. Uh, we see Roman Reigns doing a lot of press. We see him uh, sitting uh, in uh, Santa Clara at the Levi Stadium watching them put together um, the set, which they say it takes them two weeks uh, to put the set together for WrestleMania. You know, 16 days out, um, they're, they're setting up. They, they have to put together everything in the back. They say they, set the, they put together the offices, uh, and then they come out, and then they, they have three cranes to put together. Um, they said that this year's uh, WrestleMania, well, I guess now this would be last year's WrestleMania. I apologize, but the one they're talking about, in case they get mixed up again, um, w was a little bit hard uh, because they were doing uh, re WrestleMania outside in sunlight, and it, it, it's harder to hide a lot of the imperfections um, that they had, so they had to really go with a more basic set. But from being there live and, and seeing it on TV as well, I think they really knocked it out of the park. Even though it was a very easy, very basic set, I still think it was it was one of the, the, the best ones that they had done. Roman Reigns talking about the fact that he's been a, a San Francisco 49ers fan in his entire life. Um, so... Uh, it sort of fits in with um, you know him you know finally coming to be in the main event of the show. Um, we see them doing a lot of press. We see uh, Hulk Hogan uh, for a moment. Uh, we we see uh, tr uh, Triple H. We see um, Stephanie. We see um, Roman Reigns. We see John Cena um, riding around on a cable car, throwing out T-shirts to the people of San Francisco, um, and uh, and everything that goes along with that. Uh, from there, uh, they build up uh, the Hall of Fame as we see Kevin Nash showing up to be in the uh, the, the Hall of Fame where he was the, uh, uh, I, I guess you can say he was the, the main eventer, even though a lot of people look at Randy Savage like he was the, the main guy to go into the Hall of Fame. Um, the, they, they focus um, a lot on, uh, on Kevin Nash and Medusa in the back, and then they show you a lot of the things that you've already seen on TV. 24, to me, is supposed to be more of a, a, the backstage things, and when it came to the Hall of Fame, we didn't get a lot of that. A lot They could have shown a lot of, like, 
uh, personal discussions like when we saw Kevin Nash walking into the arena and uh, Ric Flair uh, being there to greet him and, and uh, you know tell him that he's going in uh, to the Hall of Fame this year. Uh, we see them getting ready for WrestleMania, uh, where we see uh, Triple H's entrance. Everybody remembers at WrestleMania 30, um, Sasha Banks, Charlotte, and Alexa Bliss were like his three um, girls uh, that were with him. And this year, you know, to play the parts of a Terminator, you had Enzo Amore, you had Blake and Murphy. Um, who else were out there? It was all guys from NXT, which I thought was really good to get them the experience of being at a big uh, WrestleMania stage and giving them a purpose for, you know, hanging around and for them to you know to sort of look at that crowd as Triple H is getting that huge pop to sort of say, I'm going to be a part of this um, next year when this is, uh, you know, getting there. Uh, we see, you know, Triple H getting ready on the Terminator thing where he's coming up and uh, Vince McMahon being there and trying to tell him how to do his intro. We see him watching it in the, in the back on TV um, at Gorilla. And telling Triple H he's going through it too fast. He has to soak in the huge pop more uh, before he, he makes his way down to the ring. He's making Triple H do the entrance over and over and over again. We see Sting um, getting butterflies in the back as he's about to get ready for his big match. Uh, standing there before he goes into Gorilla. Um, you, you can really tell that um, everybody around him is being very quiet, trying to make, not make him nervous. And um, you know he livens the party up a little bit, trying to break the tension uh, by yelling out. But really, really cool. Um, Seth Rollins is saying that he's soaking in the moment of being his first um, singles match at WrestleMania. This is something that he's really strive for. Um, the story that came out WrestleMania weekend was that Seth Rollins didn't know he was going to cash in during the main event until the Rock and Triple H Ronda Rousey segment was going on. And that's when the producers came to him and told him that he was going to become champion. I was really hoping that they were actually going to show that footage because I believe that it is out there. Maybe we'll have to wait, um, for, you know, Seth Rollins to, uh, Maybe we're gonna have to wait for you know a Seth Rollins DVD or or documentary or something like that because they film everything WrestleMania weekend, everything backstage, everything around the town. I'm sure that one day we're going to get this. So um, I thought it was cool that before uh, Sting went out there for his match, uh, Vince McMahon walked up to him and, and he basically said that uh, he'd worked very hard uh, to get to this point of his career and he thanked him for being there and uh, he wished him luck and, and told him to go out there. And uh, Sting told them that he appreciated it. Uh, from there, we see um, what broke down during the Sting versus Triple H match. And you see the reaction of the uh, superstars in the back. Um, we see uh, Seth Rollins talking with John Cena. And John Cena basically just telling him that, um, you know, sometimes you know, simple is easy. And sometimes you have to lose everything that is in reality. Uh, not everything, you know, has to make sense uh, to steal the words from LV. Um, we saw Rusev riding out there on his tank and, and him being out there uh, doing rehearsal, which is the the one thing that I remember the most from WrestleMania 31 was Rusev on that tank. I thought that was the coolest uh, thing we'd ever seen. Uh, they talk about Paige, uh, the fact that she is a newcomer to the WWE roster, and it is hard um, to, to comprehend that she had a big match at, at WrestleMania 31 with AJ in the tag. Um, they didn't show AJ at all except for her, you know, putting on the finisher in, in that tag match against the Bellas. But, you know, Paige, who debuted the night after WrestleMania 30, uh, getting the win, winning the, uh, the championship on her first night on Monday Night Raw. And, you know, basically she was on the roster for one year and this was sort of like her one year mark. Um, you know, you know, being on this big stage and, and being a wrestling fan, everyone knows that uh, WrestleMania is the biggest day of all. And I don't know if it was nerves or if it was um, you know, she was scared or, or, or what it was, really. Um, but Paige, um, you know, just was really nervous backstage. She said she was crying throughout the whole day and she didn't know why. And uh, she couldn't uh, get herself uh, to, to stop from crying. Um we see the the culmination of the main event with Roman Reigns coming out, uh, coming down to the ring. Him and Brock Lesnar beating the holy hell out of each other, only for Seth Rollins to come running out of the back um, when he pinned uh, Roman Reigns. I don't know if they really wanted to break that portion, but uh, it would have been cool um, for to, to, to hear Seth Rollins tell Roman Reigns. I can't remember if he said "I love you" or if he said "thank you," um, but uh, then he said. Uh, 
uh, Seth Rollins is in the back talking about how big of an accomplishment it is for him to become uh, champion uh, at WrestleMania, saying that it was possibly the greatest uh, main event in WrestleMania history. And I remember when the show ended, we were we were all sitting there saying that that show was awesome. Even given that the Undertaker match during the show really didn't mean anything. I was talking to Ravi last night, and he says he still remembers the Undertaker um, entrance. I don't. I don't really remember the entrance. I remember Bray Wyatt's entrance with the Scarecrows. Um, walking along with them more than anything else. But this was a good episode of, of, of 24. Um, I, I just wish that, you know, definitely if it was an hour and they focused more on the, the things to do besides for WrestleMania, it could be a great commercial for fans to really want to go to WrestleMania. If you show more of what Access is, if you show NXT, if you show that definitely you know, this trip over five days is just jam-packed with tons of of things to do for any wrestling fan.